Joining us now is Dr. Zbigniew Brzezinski, former National Security Advisor for President Carter, proud father of Mika, the co-host on Morning Joe on this network. Dr. Brzezinski, it is always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for your time. Rachel, it's nice to be with you. President Obama acknowledged today that the U.S. government helped overthrow the Iranian government in 1953. Has a president ever admitted to that before? Not to my knowledge. What do you think the implication of that is? Remember, however, that he also mentioned in the same breath the taking of American diplomats as hostages by the Iranians. Yes. In effect, what he was saying was, if we are to go forward, if we are to have a normal relationship, we cannot rehash the past. Each of us has something to be apologetic about or to regret about, but let's go forward. Let's not excuse, uh, exchange accusations. Let's see if we can structure a more normal relationship. It was a gutsy speech. In terms of the willingness to be honest about uncomfortable truths, uncomfortable history like that, do you think that will have an effect moving forward of opening up some doors that may have been closed, either in terms of the opinion on the Arab street of what's possible with America or in dealing with specific Middle Eastern leaders? I think this speech was a very courageous statement of his political philosophy and previewing the strategy that he'll follow. It was not, as you have already said, a policy speech. Nonetheless, by redefining what America means to the world and how America views the world and how Islam and America should view each other, I think he has laid the basis for a much more constructive, much more effective American foreign policy. So I consider this speech to be a watershed and a particularly gutsy statement by a president who laid it on the line in a way that it should have been laid on the line and thereby undoing some of the damage inflicted on America over the last eight years by an administration that was Manichaean in its attitude, that engaged in Islamophobia, that united Islamic extremists with, the, with Islamic moderates uh, to our disadvantage. When the president took time, and he went into both of these issues in some detail, he took time to debunk both 9-11 conspiracists and deniers of the Holocaust, and then announced pointedly that he was on his way to Buchenwald next. Is there a reason to believe that he thinks that those issues are holding back political progress, that those specific sort of conspiracies and misconceptions about modern political history are part of the problem in terms of moving forward? There's no doubt that in recent years, both many Americans viewed the world in very, very skewed fashion. And many outside of America had a totally conspiratorial view of America, including even the idea that 9-11 was somehow or other a put-up job that really wasn't done by Osama bin Laden and others. So I think President Obama is breaking through a whole mythology that has paralyzed American dealings with the world. I think this speech could now be the point of departure for a really constructive policy towards Israel and Palestine and towards Iran. And these are two major problems that need to be addressed if there is to be stability in the Middle East and if we are eventually to extract ourselves from that region in which we risk becoming bogged down militarily. When he used the word Palestine today twice, as you just did in your last answer, that uh, I think sent eyebrows raising because that's not been the, 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 the verbal construction that, pres that presidents have used in the past. People have talked about the future Palestinian state or other more amorphous terms like that. When the president directly today said Palestine, does that have diplomatic meaning? Does that have resonance that maybe doesn't seem immediately clear just from the word? It defines a little more sharply his position. It means that we are serious about there being two states. It also means that we're serious when he says that the condition in which the Palestinians live now are intolerable, and that's the word he used. It shows that we are again ready to be a mediator in this dispute and not a partisan favoring one side over the other. And without doing that, I don't see how the United States could ever resolve this problem. We had eight years of a lot of sloganeering about Middle Eastern peace, but no serious engagement. What the president said today is a commitment, and he personally emphasized it, that he's going to stick with it. 
that is going to persevere with it. And he laid out a framework which can now be the point of departure for more specific policies. When he took that hard line today on Israeli settlements and saying directly, the United States does not accept the legitimacy of continued Israeli settlements, is that new policy or has that been the policy of the United States and it's just never been put out that, blunt, that bluntly in public before? I would put it a little differently. That has been the rhetoric the United States has been using. So in that sense, it's not new. What's new about him saying it and the way he put it is that he conveyed his intention to be serious about it, that this really now is, in fact, U.S. policy. And if the settlements continue to be built, there will be a serious problem in our relations with Israel. That's the obvious implication of such assertions. In terms of the domestic politics here and the way that this is being seen from the United States, critics on the right, uh, particularly those who are looking for some political position in the Republican Party, have criticized Barack Obama as being apologetic about the United States, deriding this as some sort of apology tour. What's your reaction to that accusation against the president? I just think that's really silly talk. I mean, I just don't even take it seriously. What was he apologetic about? He acknowledged a fact specifically regarding Iran, that we were implicated in the overthrow of the Mossadegh government. But he made it very clear in that context that he's acknowledging it not as an apology, but as a proposition that we shouldn't both drag up the past and exchange accusations. We have claims against the Iranians as well. For example, the violation of international law by seizing our diplomats and holding them as hostages. But if we were just to exchange mutual accusations, we're not going to get anywhere. Dr. Zbigniew Brzezinski, former National Security Advisor to President Carter, and a very, very valued guest on this show. Thank you so much for your time tonight, sir. It's, it's nice I've been with you. Thanks.